Good afternoon. Welcome to my daily chat. This is episode number 911 or 911 or 911, whichever way you want to frame it. And the topic today is about, um, well, let me say what the title is first and I'll explain what that means after I introduce myself. The title today is, um, you know what, it just blanked on me. I'll talk about it when I get into it. <laughs> but you want to stay tuned because it's about really respecting other people and respecting yourself in a relationship. And I realized the title went out of my head completely, which is a good thing I wrote it down. Read the title and you can find me when I'm going to talk what I, meant, what I said, but I know what I'm going to talk about. So before I jump into the conversation, let me choose myself so you know who I am, in case you haven't seen my talks before, and also why you might want to watch. My name is Barry Selby. I'm just noticing my plant looks a bit, hmm, a little, little sad for wear. Okay. Um, easily distracted, apparently, it's that squirrel, squirrel central today. My name is Barry Selby. Hi, welcome to my broadcast. I am <laughs> I am an inspirational speaker, spiritual guide, love and relationships expert, and author of the best-selling book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, book for singles and couples, men and women. Um, I do have a second book, Brewing, and I've also got a second book I'm part of as well, a third book I'm part of. I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine, which is why I help women create balance in love, life, and business, and also started these talks almost three years ago now. I think it is about three years now. I'm not sure exactly when it was. Um, and... They initially were called Messages from the Masculine Inspiring Your Feminine Heart. And so today we're now episode 911, 911. I'm definitely going to plan for something for my thousandth because it's getting really crazy. I've got so many talks done now. And I'll tell you the back end where you can find the replays. This is a Facebook Live, by the way, if you're watching for the first time. So if there's anybody who jumps in and comments, I'll be able to respond to them and talk to them. So this is episode again, 911. I'm going to talk to you about why being single may be better than being in a relationship. The title I, I put in there because I was talking to a friend of mine Wednesday, so two days ago. Oh, by the way, happy post Thanksgiving because you weren't watching my broadcast yesterday. Um, and we're talking about the fact that, is that a lot of times people, and in fact, he quoted this to me. I'm borrowing his quote, so it's not mine originally, just to be clear. But he was talking about how people oftentimes are in a relationship and don't really necessarily go into a full on relationship, committed, dedicated, and want to be there all the time. And when they leave, they're really concerned about, no, let me say that another way. They're not concerned about their partner's experience. And this is one of the challenges that I believe that people face is that, okay, which way do I want to go? I just, just had a choice point show it might. Sidebar, if you, haven't seen, if you haven't seen my broadcast before, oftentimes something comes through that I don't have control over. And sometimes I have choices that show up in my awareness, whether you call it from spirit or just from my, from my subconscious, that give me choice points. And sometimes they get stuck because I'm like, eeny, meeny, miny, mo. So the eeny, meeny, miny, mo I'm playing with right now is one side of the coin is that we are so self-centered that we don't think about the other person's feelings when we decide to jump in and jump out of a relationship. On the other side of the coin, on the other choice point, is that we're simply oblivious. And we're not necessarily egotistical, we just don't really think about it. So this is my reminder to think about it, <laughs> simply put. There's some things I can talk about with this paradigm where we get, we get stuck in the choice about choosing a relationship to make ourselves feel better because we don't feel good ourselves. Um, we don't love ourselves first, we love somebody else. All these different backwards wired things that are not functional. And I've talked about this many, many times over 911 broadcasts. So what I'm attempting to say here is spend time being single, intentionally, consciously being single. Hi Gina, nice to see you in my broadcast. Thanks for being here. Um, and, and just so you know, I, I, I said at the beginning because I was about to give the title verbally on the talk and I totally blanked on it. So whatever I wrote in the title is what I'm speaking about. But I just can't remember what I, what I wrote to speak now, just to be clear. Um, <laughs> it makes it very entertaining. But I know what I want to talk about, which is really about self-care. And I mean it from the point of view that choosing a relationship from a place of lack or from a place of neediness or from a place of wanting more love or wanting to have sex or wanting to have all these other things that are external to you, when you don't have your internal alignment sorted out, is a massive error in approach. Something I've become very clear about and adamant about and passionate about is really helping my clients love themselves first because so many of them don't. Excuse me, so many people, not just my clients, but so many people don't love themselves first. So when they're looking at a relationship, they're looking to at that person out there as to bring to them all these different things they don't believe they have themselves. It's a real messed up um, I say wiring is not the right word. It's a really messed up approach. The, the, the dance of relationship 
when it's done from a codependent place, which is what this paradigm is if you're not living in a place that's holistic, is that you're choosing relationships that are coming from a place of codependency. And, and so two things are happening. One is your attachment to that relationship is unhealthy. Secondly, I'm realizing maybe a three or third one. Secondly, you're actually giving your power to the other person because you're making that person more important to you than you are. And you make that person more accountable to your feelings than you are, which is a totally messed up approach. Again, codependency. I'm adamant about stamping it out. It's going to take me a long time, I know, because it's everywhere on the planet. But my, my point about this is that we are trained by our culture almost automatically on autopilot choosing relationships. Exactly, Gina. Codependency is not good for anyone. But we choose that because it's the way we're taught by our culture, by our media, by our entertainment, by everything in the society, and probably by our parents too, because most of them live that way, that we should be in a codependent relationship, which means that we are in the belief system that we're only going to be happy when somebody else makes us happy. We're only going to feel love when somebody else loves us. We're only going to feel validated when somebody else validates us. We neglect either, well, hmm, let me see. I'll say we neglect taking that to a self-centered place first, self-centric place. Let me say it that way is better than self-centered. But I'm watching this thing with egotism and that structure we place inside ourselves. So let me take, let's, let's take, yes, exactly, Gina. Most of us are conditioned to be codependent. And that's the thing. That's why I talk about this a lot because it's so easy to hear people. Thank you, Claire. Thanks, appreciate the feedback. Um, that we're in this place in relationships where I think it was about time we woke up, we evolved, and we became conscious people. Um, in fact, a meme, a meme I posted a little bit earlier today, you might want to go look at. It was a powerful, um, not rendition, it's not the word. It was a powerful model of what a truly deep, rich, fulfilling relationship is between two individuals who are both whole beings. And this is the point. <sighs> Codependency is a false presumption that we're incomplete. Codependency is what we choose because we think we're incomplete. And that's the mistaken approach. Because none of us are incomplete. But we believe we are, so then we look to somebody else to fill up the gap we think we have. And that's the whole point that makes it so dysfunctional. So in our relationships, we tend to choose partners who present the things we don't think we have ourselves. It's not just about, oh, they've got a great body, which might be part of it. But it's also about, they have confidence that I don't think I have. They have the love that I want that I don't have. This, this whole cycle of self-diminishing beliefs and negation of our true authentic nature. My work seems to be shifting, not so much shifting out of it, shifting more into supporting people and being great individuals. Not about relation, is the relationship, yes. But before you can be in a healthy relationship, you have gotta be a healthy individual. There are so many relationships that are built on, based on false pretenses. Now funny, and of course the whole thing about this is it's not just one person doing it, both partners are doing this. Both partners are choosing the relationship from a codependent place, which is ineffective, dysfunctional, and ultimately painful. Codependency can work to a degree when both people are unconscious, meaning, let me say it another way, not subconscious, who aren't awake. They're basically running autopilot. That's what I really want to make, say. So doing the work deeply to choose fully into being whole yourself first when you are single is my highest recommendation to choose a healthy relationship. It sounds backwards to say it this way, but if you want to be in a healthy relationship, be a healthy individual. That's a, that's a meme right there. But this is the thing, is we fall into this trap thinking that we will only be happy when we're with another person. And every single Disney movie and fairy tale and love song has been training us to think that way for the last 60, 70 plus years. So of course we believe that we will only be happy when somebody else is in our life, when we're in a relationship, when we're loved by somebody else. That can be true to a degree, a small degree. But until you love yourself first, until you trust yourself first, until you have a healthy relationship with yourself first, you're never going to get what you really want. The opposite, the, the opposite or the, the other end of the spectrum from codependency is interdependency. Not independence, but inter, inter, interdependence. Meaning that we are autonomous individuals loving ourselves in healthy relationship with who we are as an individual being. So that when we bring to relationship is we bring a wholeness, fully, fully, fully presenting ourselves, meaning like relationships are 100-100, not 50-50. So that's the other thing. So we're thinking that relationships are 50-50. Bullshit. <laughs> 
it's a balance, yes, but we're both we're only 100 percent beings. We're all fully complete. We're all fully whole, as I mentioned earlier. So our choices in a relationship has to be. No, it doesn't. Have, well, it doesn't have to be. It's recommended to be, from my perspective in this video, because it's my talk. A place where both people are individually whole and remembering the wholeness. So when they choose each other, they're adding to the relationship they already have, adding to the uniqueness they already bring. Being interdependent also means that you do have certain things you bring to the relationship the other person doesn't have. Not things that they don't think they have, but things they don't have. That's why, especially in straight relationships, a man and woman work together really well. When a man brings his masculinity, his strength, his, his core beingness, his presence to a relationship with a woman who brings the flow and the dance and the, and the massive um, force of nature that she is. I talk about masculine and feminine polarity in other talks, but it's that sense of how both partners bring things the other person doesn't have. That's one example of it. But each individual is whole, complete, and healthy on their own. And the thing is this, is if you want to be in a healthy relationship, you've got to be healthy before you start. If you're looking to be in a healthy relationship and you're healthy with yourself, it will never, it will never allow you to be whole yourself. You have to find your way back to your own wholeness, your own self-support, your self reliance, your self-trust, your self-confidence, your self be all these different self things to talk about before you can have a healthy relationship. I created my self-love meditation out of a need from my clients who wanted to be self-supporting. So my self-love meditation, which I've talked about a few times recently because I talked about the gratitude piece and the intention piece that are in that meditation or in those meditations, is about finding a way back to yourself. It's about trusting yourself enough because when you trust yourself enough, you won't need a relationship. And it sounds backwards to say that because I'm a relationship coach. But what I'm saying is if you want a healthy relationship, you don't want to need one because the need comes from codependence. The need comes from a sense of lack. The need comes from a false pretense that you're not who you think you are. But who you are is a fully expressed whole being when you remember. But you need to do the inner work. You need, no, no let me say it another way. I encourage you to do the inner work because there's no need in this. You can do whatever you want. But my encouragement to you, my invitation to you, is to do the inner work. Because when you do the inner work to unlock your own memories of who you are as a magnificent being, then one, you become less needy of a relationship, and two, you actually become more attractive to a future partner. Because your wholeness becomes a light shining out, so to speak, energetically. And so when people meet you, they're going to be pretty impressed. <laughs> Because they won't feel that needy hunk, the needy piece. Because what I said earlier about when you're in that place of need for a relationship, that neediness can be very um, visible. Well, not visible, wrong word. Tangible, that's a better way of saying it. I know from my experience being around women, and I've been single for quite a long time, just to be transparent, and a lot of, met a lot of women over the last bunch of years. And the ones that come across as needy, I tend to walk away from in terms of dating. Now, if they want to be a client, then yes, I can help them. <laughs> just to be clear and this is the thing I said someone recently which kind of cracked me up but it will crack them up too is that the challenge for me being in this business and having studied so much already is for me to be in a relationship with somebody who hasn't done their own work is pretty much impossible and I'm being true about that if sh this woman that has not done her own work to become as autonomous as she's in her life we won't fit together energetically she'll be a client but it's kind of the thing that I look at okay so I'm going on dates with women they don't fit then I'll choose them to be clients I don't mean it that way but it's almost like that because I'm so clear now, not so much that I'm better than anybody else, but I've done enough work on myself to know that what I want to add to my life has to be good enough to want to add it to my life. Does that make sense? If you're doing the work and becoming more autonomous, owning who you are, loving who you are, respecting who you are, why would you want to be in a relationship with somebody who's less than that themselves? It wouldn't make sense unless you want to take pity on them. And that's a trap. <laughs> You can have mercy on other people. You can be compassionate to other people. Don't date them unless you want to have somebody who's equal to you or even slightly ahead of you. You want to play the, the, the one-upmanship, the game of growth. But it's understanding this is the way it works. And having respect for your partner by not dating them until you're already whole is what I was meaning in the title. It's this thing that we get into where we don't treat... It's, it's like to use the... Um, Another quote from way back when, which is, um, if, you treat, if you treated your friends like you treated yourself, you wouldn't have any. It's that mindset. If you date people where you don't respect their wishes because you're so focused on yourself, you won't have a healthy relationship. That was kind of what I meant from the title at the beginning. I know I, I deviated slightly, 
But it comes back to this whole piece again, which is really comes back to loving yourself. When you anchor back in who you are, when you respect who you are and trust who you are, that's when things shift. It's your choice. Because you can choose just to play in the dating game of swiping and meeting somebody and hoping it's going to work out and fingers crossed and maybe it'll work out, maybe it won't. And keep doing that until 20 years have gone by. Or you can say, you know what, I'm going to clear the decks. I'm taking time for me for the next six months, next year, next whatever that is. And say, I'm going to spend time getting to know who I am, loving myself, appreciating myself so I can have an amazing relationship when I'm ready for it. If you surveyed the general population, I would say most of the people in, the, in their relationships didn't go out and start for themselves first. Hey, Mary. They didn't start with who they were first. They're actually looking for love to fill up something. And for many people, that relationship, I'm having to reach here, I'm going to see if this is going to fit. For some people, their relationship choices are to fill the gap they think that was left by their parents. I didn't plan on going here, but it's coming up, so I'm going to talk about it. So there are people who are choosing their partnerships because they have a void they have inside from when they left their parents' house. So if they moved out or if one of the parents died or they just had a, they moved, become an adult, do their own thing, that they feel like they're missing something. And so they, they actually put a, a, they have a vacancy space in their, con their awareness for where their parents are no longer with them. But the reality is they put a relationship in that space is not going to work. That's another piece of that codependency trap. Because basically as kids, we are codependent with their parents because we can't take care of ourselves until we have our parents. So the challenge is, once we leave that, can we become independent? Can we become self-supportive? Can we become autonomous, healthy, whole individuals? So we can attract a healthy, whole relationship. That, for me, is the best way through, the best way in, and it's a greater place to choose from. I'm coming back to the same point, so I don't want to keep repeating myself, but I think you get my point. This is really the... Um, the crux of my work in a way is also the most important piece of the work that anybody can do for a healthy relationship. The relationship you have with yourself comes before the relationship with anybody else. And that's true for anybody, male, female, straight, gay, whatever that is. Because your relationship with yourself is the only one you're going to have for the whole of your life. So why not focus on making the best one you can have first? And then have somebody join you who's a great person who's done the work themselves as well. You're taking care of yourself, they're taking care of themselves. Together you take care of each other. That's a healthy relationship. I dropped a few mess, um, hints in my talk about some things I'll put in the comments as links you can check out. Um, I did say this weekend, by the way, because it is the holiday weekend, I'm not doing a Black Friday special because <laughs> that's, too, that's too gauche. But I am putting an opportunity to have single coaching sessions. So if you want to have a single session with me, which is not my normal offer, I'm normally up for three months or six months, committed diet, deep dive coaching, if you want to have a single session with me, I'm offering those through the holiday weekend. You can book it over the weekend and then you can sign up afterwards for next week or week after if you want to. You may want to do it this weekend. But with all the holiday stress, family dynamics, travel, everything else, you might feel like you need support somewhere. So I'm offering that as a gift, as a suggestion to you if you want one of those. Hi, Cindy. Nice to be, have you here. So that being the comments, because I do mention I'll offer some things in the comments. My, my commitment every time I do a talk is to put some calls to action, some invitations in the comments. You can check out my stuff, my stuff, my skills, my, my support. I mentioned self-love several times, so of course my self-love meditation will be in the comments for you because if you practice self-love meditation, the self-love meditation, and it has two audio tracks with my voice, one for AM, one for PM, one for intention setting, and one for gratitude at the end of the day, that will give you a whole new paradigm. 30 days of practicing that will transform your experience and transform your relationship with yourself so you become that beacon for a relationship you really want. So those two things will be in the comments, and if you want to reach out for a conversation with me, to just find out how I can help you and find out what you're looking for and I'll give you some guidance I'll put a link in the comments for a chat it's a simple complimentary conversation between you and me I'll put you on the calendar and we can have a conversation so those three things will be in the comments um, the one session special for the weekend I don't have a link for that so I'll, put a, I'll just mention it in the comments you just message me over social media and I'll set you up a call for that so I think that's made my point and I hope this has made some sense to you and thank you for all the love and comments by the way I appreciate that um, this is the true way to get where you want in a relationship. It's the true focus to where you want to have the love you want. And it's the healthiest way to be in a relationship is to start with the one with yourself. It's kind of that simple. So I appreciate you being with me as always. Oh, links. If you have, replay, excuse me. I'm like, what do I do at the end of the broadcast? Yeah, tell you what I'm done. Links and where you can find my broadcast. <laughs> this is my daily broadcast if you haven't seen me before. 5 p.m. Pacific time right here on my personal page, which is Barry Selby on Facebook.
you can join me live, you can interact with me. But if you want to catch the replays, you haven't seen them before, on my business page on Facebook, you can like my page, which is barryselby.author. I post them all there, although Facebook's not really the most um, effective gatherer of all my broadcasts. So I put them onto YouTube as well for safekeeping. So all my 900 plus broadcasts are also on YouTube. So you go to my YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash user slash Barry Selby. There's a playlist on there called Messages for the Masculine. Please subscribe to my channel. And you can look through the titles, search for keywords, et cetera, et cetera, and find what you want. It's easy to look for them there because YouTube's a better video um, aggregator. That's a good word, rather than Facebook. So if you have any questions or anything, please put in the comments and I'll respond to it when I sign off. And if you want to share this with anybody, you want to, you want, if you want to share this with anybody you think should see this, that was clearer, then please do so. And uh, I think that's about it. This, this is pivotal piece I know for the work. It's the work I do with my clients and my client's life transformed through this. So if you want to get some help, don't hesitate. Reach out to me. Again, links will be in the comments when I sign off. I appreciate you being with me. Thanks for the love and the comments. I will see you again tomorrow, same time, same channel. And uh, thank you for being with me once again, as always. Please take care of yourself. I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.